folks. We're going to talk about those falling away folks. Did you notice, as of late, many of you have had a type of mentality, so to speak. It's, it's been in the way for a long time that many people are believing differently, right? Right now, many people believe in the word very differently. The Bible states, speaking of the coming of the Lord, as this, that day shall not come. You know, when the dead rise first. And, um, and the Lord comes back and descends with a shout, and everybody's changed in a twinkling of an eye. That day does not come. It will not come, lest there come a falling away first, and that man of perdition be revealed. The falling away first. Now, that falling away first should be first and foremost in your mind. Falling away is when people abandon their faith. They just begin to not believe anymore. I'm going to be straightforward with you on this. Okay? We all have a choice to make. I can't make the choice for you. You can't make the choice for me. I can't make the choice for my daughter. She can't make the choice for me. Angela can't make the choice for her children. They can't make the choice for her. We all have a choice to make. If a person is over the age of accountability, and God determines that, it's not done through a number. Because I was able to perceive truth when I was very young. If that takes place, and a person makes the wrong choice, that's between them and the Father. You can't, you, you can't hold yourself responsible for that. Listen, all you can do, because it's ultimately somebody else's choice, all you can do is encourage them and fight the good fight of faith for them. What you don't want to do is turn your back on a person, not knowing that they'll commit suicide. Because you washed your hands at them and turned your back, and then they go and kill themselves because you wouldn't stay the course and stand firm. And this is why you have to stand firm, because once they're gone, they have made a choice. If we finish our race, if I finish my race, you may not know I finished my race. To you, I just died. It may be under strange circumstances. But my time here would be done. And the choice I've made in this world, because you can't come back and do it again, is what you're stuck with. The Word of God says people in the household will turn against one another. The Word of God says a lot of people who you think are going to make it will not. The Word of God says a great division is coming. The Word of God says a falling away is coming. Understand this. There are many people that we do love that we have prayed for that won't make it. There are many people we've turned our backs on and they have truly repulsed us. They will come to the Lord and they will make it. Right? The ones you count out may make it in before you do. And the ones you think for sure are going to make it in may not make it in at all. That's not our call. That's up to the Lord. We are accountable for standing on the word of God to demonstrate our true faith in the Lord while we are alive. Because when you're no longer alive, you can't prove any faith you can then see. It doesn't require faith after you have seen. You don't see many things in your life because it's impossible to prove God with, please God without faith. Therefore, things are held back from you seeing things. You don't want to see something because you'll be held accountable for knowing. And if you make a wrong choice and you know better, you're condemned for it. But if you follow him by faith and you follow the Lord, you have not seen. And you're doing this by faith. You're truly one of his. Once the things are revealed into the earth, it no longer requires faith to believe. All men at some point are going to know that God is God. But by that time, they will have made their decision. 
You make your decision prior to seeing any proof of anything, folks. You make your decision based upon truth. And what is the truth? It is a spiritual truth that the flesh cannot touch. It cannot see. It is a truth separated from the flesh that the truth may be of a pure source. And that is spiritual. The earth again and the flesh in the earth in the systems in the earth are tainted. Therefore, to believe in the Most High, you must do so spiritually. That's why in the Word it says, God is spirit. Therefore, those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. You cannot worship Him in anything of flesh. To worship the Lord in spirit is to worship Him in the spiritual truth of things, which in fact is the reality, and this is the dream world. This is the temporary world. This is the world where families change every single day of your life. This is the world where people come and go. But in eternity, whoever is in eternity will be there for a long time. In the end, if you think you're going to get there in eternity and be saddened from all the people you lost here, let me tell you something. Anybody lost to the Lord, separated from the Lord, you will have no memory of. Hope you can understand that. There will be no memory, no bad emotions or anything else. Again, that was specifically stated. That God will wipe the tears away from their eyes. And if they had tears in their eyes, they were hurt. He will wipe it away. And he said, there will be no more memory. Of the former things. So many people you think will make it won't. And many people you think won't make it will. But our responsibility is a responsibility of love. A debt of love to our fellow man. To stand to the very end. As much as we are able for somebody else. To never turn your back on them. To afford them all opportunities of your patience and kindness. Just as Jesus did the same for us. Everything the Lord did for us, that is bearing your cross for the sake of your fellow man. He also died for the Pharisees. He did. And after he died for the very ones who had him persecuted, you know what he said? Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. When you know what a disciple came along who was stoned to death, and he said, Father... He said, Lord, lay this charge. Don't lay this charge to them. Don't do it. They don't know what they're doing either. In the same manner, we ought to walk the earth. Because if a person persecutes you for the sake of the word of God, they don't understand either. How can they? I'll tell you this, unless a person has been to hell itself, how can they understand what they're in for? It's foolishness, but they're all given a choice of spirit. A choice of spirit. When a person turns away spiritually, they're truly gone. And they can be anybody. They can be anyone. Anybody or anyone. Our job is to fight the good fight of faith. And I hope that you know to fight the good fight of faith is to stand on the word of God with great patience. To see a salvation to work by his principles. No matter what you see or what the situation looks like. To never go back into the world. To never look back like Lot's wife. To be totally totally and utterly consumed. But to go forward. Now this falling away first. Is happening right now. That means the man of perdition is soon to be revealed. The Bible says. and, and, And the apostle Paul said. There must come a falling away first. And that man of perdition be revealed before the coming of the Lord. So what I'm saying is this. The ripening of the fruit. Listen to me. We just read about the ripe. Jesus is watching the fruit. So then, if fruit is ripe, at the same time it's ripe, other fruits start falling, don't they? Have you ever noticed that? When fruits are ripe on a tree... That's when other fruits are bruised and they start falling. 
they begin to rot right there on the tree. Have you noticed that? I've noticed in fruit trees. I'm telling you that there are many fruits that are becoming ripe. And when they begin to go rotten, that's the falling away. The man of perdition will come because when they begin to rot, we're going to have to go through a lot. We need the power of the Holy Spirit to see us through it. We will see the son of perdition. We will see a portion of that and we will see that man of perdition revealed. But we will not be a part of his kingdom. Because it says so in Revelation, and if you're not a part of his kingdom, guess what? You were either killed or you died. But either way, you come out of great tribulation. And again, I have to state it sometimes the Lord will take people away to spare them from the horrors to come in their lives in a like manner. Many people will go and be with the Lord because they simply won't be alive. They will have finished their race. You know what that means? Those who sub- subscribe in a rapture, your rapture could come in five minutes. That means your race is finished. Instead of looking for a time when everybody's pulled out, we all concentrate on our walk with the Lord. Are we truly authentic with the Lord? See, that's one of the catches that gets people. Everybody waits on the big event. And if you wait on the big event, you're going to miss the small ones. If you wait on a huge storm, you miss the small sprinkles. If you wait on a lump sum of cash that's huge, when somebody hands you five bucks, you discard it. When you're waiting on something big, it minimizes everything else. So guess what? It is effectively hidden from you. You won't appreciate $5 if you're waiting on $50 million. But if you didn't have any money, no money at all, and you need it to eat, that $5 would be a blessing in your life. But if you were waiting on $50 million the same day, you would have no appreciation for the $5. And so this is what has happened. While everybody's looking for these big, huge signs to take place, Jesus already told us that the world would not know anything until it overtook them. Well, if they can't see anything, then that means each and every Christian is aware of the subtle signs. That's why he told you there would be earthquakes and floods in diverse places. That's why he told you nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be wars and rumors of force. These are things that are normal in society, but things nevertheless that Jesus spoke of that you can see. Just like the abomination of desolation. Do you really think the world is going to figure that out? No, they will not. They won't even, they have not figured out the dragon. See, all too often, people operate by what they see. Example number one. People think the dragon is not in these kingdoms. Keserat is worshipped in every single kingdom on this earth. Images, iconography are behind a lot of paintings. Secret passages, ritual rooms. Most of these places even have a dungeon for mock-up rituals. You don't know anything about it. Because they are totally devoted to the dragon, the great dragon. The great horned dragon is what they call him. A dimensional being. The king of the world is his other name. And they act like these things aren't happening. And when the revelation says they worshipped the dragon. And the dragon is here. And that implies people are part of the beast system already. It's just not manifest yet. Listen, when the beast system comes and people are saying who can make war with the beast, that means they had a loyalty to the dragon. So then anybody who pops up in that kingdom, they're going to feel a sense of loyalty too. But the kingdoms are already established. Folks, are you following me? The kingdoms are already established. 
and people worship them right now. And what I'm saying is worship is voluntary observance. People do worship the world and its kingdoms more than they do the word of God. There are lots of people who have taken the Bible and put it on the back burner. They even say to themselves, business is business, and my faith is my faith, and they separate the two. Let me tell you something. My faith is my life. And my life, if it's in business, the word comes with me. If my life is in whatever, the word comes with me. There is no separating my life from the word of God. Oh, and by the way, salvation is a lifestyle. The kingdom of God is an eternal presence. His principles, his statutes. To be an ambassador is 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There is no part-time Christian. There is no just one worship on Sundays. If Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath, and I make my abode in Jesus of Nazareth, then every day to me is the holy day, because my true place of rest is in Christ. Therefore, the Sabbath, the Sabbath is established every day of my life. The prophets could not enter into a place of rest. That place of rest is the bosom of Jesus of Nazareth. Yahshua, my they can't do it. They couldn't do it. And they're going to do it once a week? No, it ought to be a lifestyle. We ought to give praise every single day. We ought to study to show ourselves approved every single day. We ought not complain and tempt the Lord our God. We ought walk in the Spirit every single day. We ought pray without ceasing, communing with the Lord in thought and every way else every single day, not just on one day. See, that's what happens when you try to keep a tradition. You don't keep your faith. Don't you understand that? Who's going to go above and beyond? He only mandated one day, therefore a lot of Christians just do it one day. But who has devoted their lives to the gospel of Jesus Christ? Because that person does it every day. That person does it every hour. That person does not want to break. That person will continue and bear their cross. That person is going to finish their race. They're going to fight the good fight of faith because they truly do love their brothers and their sisters. And that becomes their true motivation because to serve the Lord is to serve your your fellow man. To be in debt to them is this simple. If you're not, if you don't feel you owe a debt of love to everybody but yourself, you're in trouble. You're still holding things against people, and if you're doing that, you haven't forgiven them. And if you have not forgiven them, neither has your Father in heaven forgiven you. And if that happens to you in your life, guess what? Hmm? You're in trouble. You're in trouble. It's not going to work out too well for you. So I say it again, there are many. There are many who will make it. There are many who will not make it. Many you think will make it won't. Many you think won't make it will. But in the end, we will stand before the Lord. We will give an account. I don't know about you, but I've given my life to him, and I've an advocate with the Father. I cannot stand before the Father in the filth of my own flesh. In the filth of my doings, I can't stand before pureness being filthy. I need an advocate. I have to be covered. In Revelation it said, they washed their robes white in the blood of the Lamb. They washed their robes white in the blood of the Lamb. This is a process. That's why we shouldn't condemn. I dare not condemn something the Lord has given life to, nor anything he has marked to be one of his. If you condemn something that belongs to the Lord, you condemn the Lord. Just so you know. That's why Jesus communicated to the apostles, when they they don't listen to you, they're not listening to me. And when they condemn the words given to you by me, they're condemning me too. I'm not going to sit there and condemn Jesus by condemning somebody. I know nothing about, or I can't see their future. I don't know if they've been marked by the heavens or not. And it's not my heart to condemn, but to fight for. 
You can't do both. You can't fight for some money and condemn at the same time. You can't do it. But the falling away first, ladies and gentlemen, is underway. If you think falling away is just simply a person not going to church anymore, not fellowshipping with you anymore, not true. Mm -mm. A person who falls away internally, they just simply don't believe. They have ulterior motives. They will begin thinking that to do away with you does God a service. Many of them are surfacing. They've been surfacing. Anybody who thinks by getting rid of you that they're doing God a service has fallen away. I hope you understand me because the Lord said that. The Bible says this about those people. They're falling away. If they think, oh, well, the body of Christ doesn't need this person, that person, and that God has sent me to get rid of this person, that, that's, that's from the pit. That's the, they're talking about the God with a little G. His name is Beelzebub. That's who they're talking about. The God of this world, the prince of the air. He is the one, the accuser of the brethren. He is the one that desires that you be killed, removed. They think they're doing God a service, but what they're really serving is the prince of the power of the air. Because, see, the word says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that believe. You're not condemned because you believe in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. You're not condemned. So how would God call anybody to condemn anybody? He doesn't do that. He didn't do that. He does not defame or anything else. He tells us to part company from those who hold certain ways. Not to be affiliated with it. They hate the very clothing they have on. But you better grab their hand and be ready to pull them from hell itself. You don't condemn them. You do things right and just. But many are condemning. Many have slipped into a brand new type religion right underneath our noses. Jesus is not the focal point. His name is mentioned once or twice, not his principles. They never preach any scriptures where it has to deal with the rich. Have you noticed that? Be careful of, you know what? Be careful. I'm not going to compromise. I know what money can do to you. I'm not going to compromise. I know exactly what it can do. Because here's a fact. If it can change your attitude, it has power over your life. Anything that can change your attitude has power over your life. Well, let me clue you in on something. The only thing that should truly be able to have the power to change your attitude is your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because all things are beneath him. And if you are with him, all things are beneath you too. This is a point of correction in our lives. Lord knows we have to get ready fast. Because now the pressure is coming. A great pressure. The pressure of war. The pressure of the heavens. A new phenomena in the earth. An unavoidable calamity. Now the pressure truly comes. In the scheme of things we've had no pressure. There's almost a trouble in my spirit. Because I know this election will be one. One of a kind. It could bring massive death. There are operatives ready to pounce. And the kids are back in school. You don't think this country needs prayer? Yes, it does. Something could be struck tonight. People need prayer. People need intercession. You are the ones who have been given power to become sons of God because you believe upon the name of Yeshua Mashiach. You are the messengers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why you petition for others. Because you intercede for them as in times of old angels did intercede for man. Your representative of the kingdom sent into this earth to do a job, a critical job. Your standing on the word means everything to somebody else. 
your life is critical for the lives of others. And it's time that you understand and know this. There's so many dangers, many more for me. Threats will abound in greater numbers than the average individual is used to. War and the threats that are involved in war will be preceded by a demonstration of the brutality people are willing to invoke. When the normal populace sees the death of hundreds of thousands, they will know that day that the threats are not a joke. And when that day comes, ladies and gentlemen, many hearts are going to begin to fail. Because with that will be the proof that the rest of the possibilities could happen. You see, can't you see, part of the reason men's hearts are going to fail them for fear is because of all the theories out there. If one thing happens, many people will think all of them could potentially happen. That's overwhelming. Men's hearts couldn't fail them for fear for looking after those things that coming up on the earth a long time ago because communication didn't operate that way. Now we have instant communication. Everybody can know everything at one time. They're going to be bombarded and overwhelmed. Can't you see the prophecies being fulfilled? In order for men's plural hearts to fail them for fear for looking after those things coming up on the earth, they have to have a collective knowledge base. They have to be able to see things. Everybody has to be able to witness things. We live in that time. How long do you think it's going to be before communications break down because of something in the heavens you can't behold anything if you have no communications and the Bible says you will see this and you will see that what does that mean that means buckle up your seatbelt don't ever convince yourself something is not going to happen it will be that thing that takes you off guard the very time when you believe nothing takes place And discernment has hardly ever worked based on the surprises and the catastrophes that have happened in America. And you have to wonder, where in the world did discernment go then? Where were the warnings? It's because they didn't want to hear the warnings. Katrina, a warning was given. Recently, warnings were given. Nobody paid attention. You give a warning, and it's always like a two-year notice. To give people ample time to make adjustments, nobody listens. Immediate warnings, people are not going to listen. Why? Because they're bombarded with information and they don't know what to believe. They can't utilize discernment because there are too many choices out there to choose from. And all that information fights the truth. Only in prayer only in relenting of what you know in your knowledge are we able to see an absolute truth. Knowledge will fail all men. It's going to fail me. It's going to fail you too. There was a sect of folks in the old days they believed that people would be saved through knowledge. That was an actual religion. The Essenes believed that. They only knew. Folks that can't stay too long, sing your prayers out to those who are going to be in combat. You military families out there, don't be shocked and surprised at the areas your children will be deployed to. Please don't be shocked at the recalls. If you're on reserve status, all I can tell you is get yourselves in shape and be prepped. Prepped and ready. Northcom is preparing. The United Nations is building up. Don't buy the lie. Understand the prophecies. If you can read through the prophecies, they will unfold right before you. The person to your left may never see it. The person to your right may never see it. So long as you know them, you'll see them. And if you see them with a gentle hand, with truth, In your mouth, 
you can speak the truth of the living God. And somebody's soul will be saved. You're here to stand until the very end. You're here to fight the good fight of faith until the very end. You're here to intercede for one another and most of all for the sinners. You're here to walk with power in the word. Your purpose to be here, your life is not useless, but critical. You're what's standing in the way of demonic entities in somebody's soul, even right now. We're going to be dealing with ash. We're going to be dealing with a lot of ash. We are. And uh, the sealing of your doors and windows for ash actually preps you for the bugs and the ash. Right? The best time to do that is the winter time. So you can detect coldness coming through your windows. Simple silicone caulking gun. Some stuffing to put in the corners. Anything you can do to stop that airflow as much as possible. If, if one of these volcanoes goes off or an explosion in a city or something explodes in America and you get a lot of wood burning and things like that, black ash is going to be in the sky. If that happens, it's going to fall or drift towards the earth. If that happens, this stuff is going to get into everything. With all the oil wells and everything else that we have, uh, in, in 19, in, in, during the, the Operation Desert Storm, when they were burning the oil wells, when everybody was getting out of there, it was actually raining oil. It was also particles dropping out of the sky with that, right? It got over everything. And to, to deal in an environment like that means you have to have a controlled airflow through your home. You don't want big drafts. You don't want that because ash will come where all the drafts are. And ashes, they're microfine particles. They look like little saw blades. You know, that, that's, that's very bad. You start breathing that, you could drown, you know, from ash being in your lungs. Somebody says Yellowstone. I don't believe Yellowstone is the most prominent and dangerous volcano. I, I do not believe that. that. There's a greater threat than Yellowstone out there. Now, I know people watch Yellowstone good for them, right? Because, but it, to be honest, if Yellowstone went off with the fury that most people think, uh, you could warn many people there's nothing anybody can do about it. The way to prepare for something like that is to prepare now. You can't prepare when it goes off. A simple sealing of your windows will help you out. Sealing of your windows. Because when ash gets on everything and gets into your house, you'll start choking. You can't go outside to get fresh air. So the more you can keep outside, the better. Right? The better. That's something you can do right now. You can do that right now. You start sealing up your homes. If you have a controlled airflow, you can also filter your homes very quickly. Very quickly. But we will have to entertain that. War is inevitable whether it be a volcano or infrastructure burning. We're, we're, and it's too dry. You know things, if we live to see a summer, things will be highly volatile. If we get past December without explosions all over the place, all over the globe, you know, we're, we're truly blessed. Something expected in December. Based upon that shock wave, we're going to have some, um, we have a pretty good idea of what to look for in December. I mean, you know what, to be honest with you, I love you guys. So I'm praying that it will actually this time be very minuscule to nothing. Right? Now, I'm not sure of that. That could be wishful thinking. Right? But I know that people aren't prepared for something like that. They've heard so many scenarios and watched too much TV. So who's truly prepared for December? Who has enough information to actually extract on this thing to prepare? And they, I may not, I may be in a position where I cannot talk about it. That's what happens. That's why I talk about things and let the topic go. I have to let it go. So, the closer we get to this thing and the more optics um, make it pick this thing up, we'll see it. So, strange way they're tracking these things. It's not the only one. It's not out there by itself. It's not the only explosion that took place a long, long time ago. Right? That magnetar in 2004 exploded, um, you know, light years away from Earth. That happened 10,000 years ago, and it just hit Earth in 2004. Isn't that something? 
based upon the tracking of the light back to the source, based upon those mathematics that happened 10,000 years ago. That's incredible. Something exploded 10,000 years ago, and it just affected Earth. It is estimated that these waves actually began uh, about 5,000 years ago. There are more pulse jets or pulses coming out. They're not recent. They began a long time ago. Something inevitable. They're finding more things like this, things that have happened 30,000 years ago that will have to entertain, you know, that will absolutely affect our... So every, it's like these things have happened and we're on this countdown timer for the worst of them. Now, this wave could bring in lots of debris. You know, I'm actually looking for one of these things, one of these waves coming through to bring in lots of debris. And that will be the time that, uh, uh, well, that just wouldn't be a good time. We're not prepared for that. The infrastructure's not, it's not robust enough to handle that. It's not. Not robust enough. And so we're going to have to entertain some of these things. Cam says, Sierra 98, that is a electronic designation for something that I think right now has a 90, I think it has a 99% impact probability. I'm not going to discuss size or anything like that, but uh, it's going to smack us. That will absolutely smack us. That will smack us. As, as far as the damage, that's going. But I do suspect that even before that, we're going to be, we're going to uh, entertain a type of Tunguska event again at least twice before that one hit, so we're just in that season. I'm not going to talk about those things so much as I'm going to talk about the principles of the Lord, because what use is it to see your own doom if you're going to be condemned? We ought to be motivated to do the work of the Lord as best we can, and to be efficient. Let that be our common lifestyle, common thread. And let us do it with all integrity, with all truth. There are no mysteries in the world left. You just don't know it, and so to you it's a mystery. But don't go off course and assume anything. You can have the truth, but please wait upon the Lord to get the truth so that you don't speak in error, right? I've been there before, too. I've been there before. I've been in every path just about you can take, and I'm telling you, those are not good paths to take. They're just not. Because if you want to help someone, They absolutely need the truth. And some of the truth sounds ludicrous. Nevertheless, it is the truth. Oh, and you're also in a time next year is the UFO year. That's what I'm going to call it right now, the UFO year. Now, you can figure that out yourself. But 2017, I'm going to call the UFO year. Right? And we're really going to need truth then. So many people will go astray next year from some of the things they're going to dream up and say. And the truth is, you don't know what they're talking about. Some of those conspiracy theories absolutely will not happen. But the ones you've not really heard about will. There's subtle things that will take place. And they're still doing the rituals and everything else. Just like the Nephilim are back, and you didn't know it. They've been back fully operational, perfectly hidden in an immoral society. They can't occupy in a holy society. They stick out like a sore thumb. That means somebody made societies immoral so they could function. Think about that. Folks, I love you. I got to go. God bless you. And lift lift Heidi and Paul Bakley up in prayer. BP Earthwatch and anybody out there who who is doing a service for the Lord. Do that. Lift them up in prayer. God bless.